Hi, welcome to Now in Android 24. Let's get into this thing. So Jetpack Compose, the alpha release finally came out. So it's been in developer releases for a while and developing in the open. Hopefully you've been checking it out. If not, that might be a good time for you to do so. The team released a ton of content in the last week of 11 weeks in Android, all specifically aimed at people learning Jetpack Compose. A really good place to start, I heard from someone on the team, is the pathway that was published. So if you have the time, it might take a few hours, but it's a really good sort of condensed view of all the stuff that you need to know to spin up on where uh, Jetpack Compose is. But there were also articles coming out, um, videos. Leland Richardson did this Thinking in Compose video to explain some of the sort of underlying concepts behind this. Lots of new code samples. There's a Compose website. So tons of content to check out, spin up on it, learn where the alpha release is going, learn where Jetpack Compose is going in general. Constraint Layout 2.0. Uh, Constraint Layout has been out for a while, and 2.0 has been out in earlier versions, but this is now stable. Sean McQuillan posted an article detailing some of the features in Constraint Layout 2, including Flow, which is a virtual layout for allowing you to put containers together that can then adjust and wrap around if the size on the, the runtime device is not what you expected at design time. Layer, which allows you to transform several views together in this virtual group and motion layout. Um, this is kind of huge. Uh, again, this has been out there for a while in earlier versions, and now this is stable. Motion layout as well as motion editor, which ships with the tool. It is in Android Studio, the stable version 4.0. There are some additional bug fixes in the Canary release, so if you want some of those fixes, check out the Canary release, uh, which is Android Studio 4.2 at this point. 11 weeks of Android. We are done. Uh, there was 11 weeks of content, um, and we just serve as the last two of those weeks in the last two weeks. Week 10 was games, media, and 5G. There was a ton of content in media controls, in new 5G capabilities and APIs to play with that, as well as content for game development. Um, there's a blog that wraps up all the content that was posted that week. There's a video playlist you can check out with all of that. And also Dan Galpin has this ongoing series called the Android Game Dev Show, uh, and he added to that during that week and will continue adding to that. So if you're a game developer, be sure to check out that show and all the rest of the content. Week 11 ended the whole series with UI. This was a huge topic. There was tons and tons of content coming out for Jetpack Compose, which I've already talked about, so I won't do that again, but also a lot of other things going on in the platform and the unbundled libraries and the tools. Uh, there was everything from keyboard animation to material design component development stuff to the Compose Alpha stuff that I talked about. There's a blog that wraps up all the links to all the content that you should check out. There's the modern UI pathway, another pathway that sort of steps you through a lot of the core stuff that came out during that week. Articles, videos, code labs. Uh, there's a video playlist for the week that you can check out. And then finally, next week, nothing. The team is done. I think everyone is exhausted. The team that put it all together, the developers that absorbed all of this content. Um, so everybody's taking a step back, breathing. I think the YouTube servers are probably taking a step back as well, breathing a sigh of relief before they go on with the next set of stuff. Also, speaking of finishing, Android 11 meetups, that series is also done. This is really unusual for a software person to actually see projects that finish, but both of those finish. So we're done with the online meetups. We had meetups happening all over the world all summer long. Uh, at last count, we had like 57 different locations. Um, and a lot of those were combined locations spread across several locations. And of course, anybody across the world could have tuned into any of them. So let's just say it happened everywhere, all, all, all day, all every day during the summer, not just 57, just everywhere, right? Um, so there was tons of stuff. Uh, hopefully you got to at least some of those events. If you did not, some of the videos from those events are posted on the Meetup site. Uh, so check that out if you wanna see what happened. Android X, obviously releasing more stuff. Every two weeks they release more. Uh, some of the things that came out recently in addition to the incremental alpha and beta releases that are always coming out, concurrent, 1.1, this library simplifies converting from listenable future to Kotlin coroutines. WebKit 1.3.0, uh, this new version of that library enables four-star strategy. 
the web miss message listener API, as well as uh, the ability to check whether the web view is running in multi-process mode. And security identity credential, 1.0.0. This is an alpha release, this is the first alpha release. Uh, so maybe not ready for prime time, but a good indication of where it is going. This new library allows you to use the new credential APIs in Android 11 with key store back to implementation for older releases going all the way back to API 24. There was a new article on structural class redefinition. Alex Light posted this talking about changes that the team made to JVMTI, Java Virtual Machine Tool Interface. Why did they do this? They did it to enable things like better implementation of apply changes in Android Studio. So now uh, they can actually inject changes that uh, include things like adding methods and fields to classes. And that means that more of your code changes can be absorbed and go through the apply changes tool to allow faster build and install time uh, than was previously possible. Also, there's a new video series called Motion Tags. There's a playlist posted with four episodes so far. This is from the Android Studio team talking about the tags that you can use uh, in Motion Layout, that thing I talked about earlier, to create rich UI animation. So four episodes so far, more on the way. So check out that playlist. And finally, one podcast episode posted, ADB 147 Jetpack Compose Alpha. One of the reasons that I love doing the podcast is it's not just about here is this API and here is how it works and here is how you use it. It's really the underlying story of how things work on the platform or the unbundled libraries in the API and what the background was and what the thoughts of the, the designers and the developers were going into this. Um, and that was one of those conversations. So Romain and I sat down with Clara Bayadi, Matvey Malkov, and uh, Ana Chiara Bellini from the uh, Jetpack Compose team, from the Toolkit team. And we talked about some of the background of Compose, how the ideas came about, uh, how you think about API design in general, how you go about building a brand new UI toolkit, and even what the term alpha means to all of us. Uh, so. As usual, all of the links to everything I talked about are in the article, so check out the article for the details. And if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.